You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Here goes AD. Oh, and it down! How about a poster? Anthony Davis is on fire! You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. What's good, Pelicans family? This is DC from the Sports Coma about to give y'all my yearly breakdown of the Pelicans. And today's show got an interesting guest on the line. A fella that goes by the name of Justin A. Smith. What's happening? What's going on? Uh, How y'all doing out right? there? Did I say your name? Yeah, yeah, it's correct, Dad. That's correct, sir. I appreciate the that the introduction. Your, uh, no, it's no Smith, man. It's, it's <laughs> Justin Nay <laughs> Williams, to be exact. But you know, totally different commentators. But how y'all doing today? Well, I hope they're doing well. We want to give y'all a round of applause as usual. I don't know if some claps up in there. Got to get on the engineers about like that. But anyway, let me give y'all a rundown of what we're gonna be going going on. With the show here, we're going to talk about A.D. and Drew making the first defensive team. That was wonderful. A.D. being the MVP finalist. We're also going to talk about did the Pelicans, did the Pelicans fulfill their expectations or did they exceed them? Then we're going to get into uh, some coach talk with Dwayne Casey being coach of the year. You think we should have gave him a, a call instead of Alvin Gentry? Did Dale Demps do enough yeah. to remain the GM? <laughs> And last but not least, y'all know we got to give y'all some of this DeMarcus Cousins talk. Should we mm. keep him? Is he leaving? Should we let him go? I don't know. It's all over the place. <laughs> so, with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into our first topic. Let's talk about AD for the third time making the all-defensive team. Drew Holiday making the all-defensive team for the first time. And this is also AD's second time making the all-NBA first team. Pretty amazing, don't you think? What you got to say about that, Justin? Hats off to AD, man. Had a fantastic year. Held it down when DeMarcus Cousin was gone. I've been really happy with what I'm saying from AD. I really got to say that. Oh, most definitely. And, you know, you see Drew Holiday making a defensive team also. You know, I had my doubts about that, but you had me right on that one, D.C. <laughs> I've been trying to school him about Drew Holiday, y'all. He ain't want to listen, but he finally came up to speed. Well, I, I think it's a, a amazing thing, man. Um, A.D., 25 years old, man. This dude's been on three-time defensive team. At one, two, three. Damn, that's almost just about most of the league time he's been in the league. So uh, <laughs> he an MVP finalist also, you know, uh, probably going to be n- number two to none other than James Harden. You know, he led the league in blocks. He was second in scoring. He was fifth in rebounds. The man was sixth in double doubles, 24 games with 30 and 10, eight with 35 and 15. And I don't remember how many 40 point games he had. Just a monster. Yeah. Amazing season. So this is going to bring me up on a little secret topic. I'm going to throw in that little jab punch I'm going to hit you with that I ain't tell you all about. AD Supermac contract. Worth it for $230 mil? What you think? $230. What you think? That's coming up 2019, man. Next year we got to start thinking about these things. Him been making the uh, his second all-NBA first team. Puts him as a... Uh, Basically, he's eligible for that super match. So he'll be the highest paid guy in the whole entire league, more than stuff. You think that's I mean, that's considering the money we just paid Holiday and the money the Marcus Cousin is expecting, I mean, like you said, it's the MVP finalist. Guy is the star of our team. I mean, you pay the man what he's worth. I mean, hopefully he want to stay in New Orleans, but you gotta you gotta make him the highest paid player without a doubt if you're the New Orleans Pelicans. No doubt. I thought you would have had some some more insight to give me that. You know, you do good armchair GMing. I don't know how we're going to figure all this out with these finances, so we got the more. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm trying to save uh, what I really want to say. <laughs> 
for for the last column, but you know, I mean, yeah, you we well, you know you got the Marcus cousin wanting the max deal and you know crying out, acting like a baby, unfriending <laughs> people. You not my friend. I won't be your friend. All right, but he's saying right. you know on, we'll we'll save that for later. We'll save that. We'll save that for later. But right now, it's about the man at hand. hand. The man that had is Anthony Davis, and do you pay this man? You you throw the house at him. If you, you know, you make sure whatever you have to do, you give this man what he deserves because he is the leader of your franchise. And I think that's an excellent analogy because I don't think you could say you throw a truck at him full of money, two hundred and thirty mil. That might be more that could fit in the truck. It might need a whole house. <laughs> it's a brinks truck. It's a brinks truck. You need truck. you need about five of them. But. Um, <laughs> Either way, uh, I'm definitely online with that thinking. Um, to be honest, other than LeBron, I mean, what other player in the whole league can can you say that does so much in so many other areas? AD is not only the best offensive player on his team, he's also the best defensive player on his team. So he has it coming from two different levels. This man is... Uh, the, the anchor on both sides. He doesn't take plays off. The only concern you have about him is he gets hurt sometimes. I want to see y'all go out there for 35 minutes a game and give 100% on defense and offense. Uh, the best players in the league, we see him take some plays off. I don't and he gets hurt he's giving it his all. You know, you exactly. know, it's not like he's just out there. He's he's just a fragile guy like that. But, you know, he his own plays, he's giving his, his, his all in. I mean, it's returnable injuries. It's not like, you know, you know I'm not going to get into that. I'm not about to start that right now. <laughs> you know, a guy going for a rebound, but y'all get the pitch out oh, there. Oh, man. You got to hold that up, man. We're going we gonna to get that on the second side of the break, man. You ready to go at DMC. I think I might get an idea how your conversation is going to go. But nonetheless, <laughs> let's move on to our next topic. The Pelicans were expected to come in this year and make the playoffs, and possibly not make a lot of noise. That was with the acquisition of DeMarcus Cousins and him not being hurt. Sorry to keep throwing him in your face, Justin. <laughs> but what, what the Pelicans did, bearing the way that the season went, with the expectations and what they were able to do, losing uh, probably the second best player on their team, would you say the Pelicans fulfilled the expectations? Or did they exceed them? You could go ahead and give it first because you know some such a nice I'm kind of on, I'm on both. I'm on both sides, believe it or not. I think we fulfilled expectations because, I mean, a lot of guys I've seen didn't even have us making a playoffs, believe it or not, with, like you say, a healthy DeMarcus Cousin. But uh, considering DeMarcus Cousin went down with so many games and it being so tight in the West, you know how hard it is to win in the West, Period. I mean, in the way Anthony Davis rise to occasion like he did, with the help of others, when you 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 add a player like Rondo, playoff Rondo, that wouldn't hurt your chances either. But I'm on as I'm looking at this rocket in uh Green Bay. Oh, Green Bay, excuse me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm sorry about this, but uh, Golden State. Go to the state, man. I mean, I mean, <laughs> with the shooters they got out there, you think one of them is Aaron Rodgers with that ball like that. But <laughs> nevertheless, considering what uh how Houston been able to play like slow the pace down and play good defense, basically is what we was doing when we had the Marcus Cousin. I I kind of see what. Guys like Tracy McGrady, yourself, D.C., was saying, you know, if we had a DeMarcus Cousins, we will be able to slow down and compete with the best of them like that. But uh, on the other hand, I also see that the pace we was going with is just like you could add some other quality guys and we could have just seen like we probably was like, not saying technically DeMarcus Cousins, but just one player away from rising – up to the occasion of probably making a championship finals or the finals and so. Okay, so you would say we exceeded our expectations then? Definitely, definitely exceeded when you sweep the Portland Trail Blazers. Because, I mean, you could, they could say what they want about Damian Lillard and McCullen and them guys, but them guys is a great team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Without a doubt, when you sweep a team like Portland, 
I mean, hats off to the whole Pelicans from the Alvin Gentry to, you know, Anthony Davis and them to be able to sweep a third seed like that first round. I mean, to get out the first round finally, I mean, there's no rewards for that. But the, I would definitely say that hats off to them, and it's been a job well done. Of course, they exceeded the – just making the playoffs, let alone with the sweep, they exceeded all, all expectations of what they had to do this year. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, I feel that we definitely exceeded expectations because I expected the Pelicans to get in the first round, make some noise, and not make it past that. I was actually rooting for it because at the beginning of the season, I said there is no way in hell they keep Alvin Gentry if they don't make it out of the first round. So it's like, ah, uh, maybe that'll happen. But looks like we got the uh, the fish eye wonder back. He's going to be back on the sidelines, which during this season, I actually grown to see the genius of Alvin Gentry and notice what he's weak at and why we don't like him. <clears throat> um, and that's going to springboard us into our next topic with Dwayne Casey being the coach of the year. And should we keep out, should we have held off on re-signing Alvin Gentry and gave Dwayne Casey a look? Cause y'all know they already gave him a one year extension. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much null and void unless we're going to break his contract and break him off. But should we have held off from doing that and possibly looked at a guy like Dwayne Casey? But Alvin Gentry, to me, throughout this season, more so than last season and the year before that, I'm going to actually try to stand up for him in a minute because I know what my uh, compadre is going to say. So Alvin Gentry, in the beginning, I'll say get, get him out of here. But then I started thinking. Alvin Gentry came in. He had a system full of Monty Williams guys. Monty Williams guys. You know Alvin Gentry wants to run. We know defense isn't his strong suit. So Alvin Gentry, over the next two years or so, they gave him some of the pieces he needed for him to run his offense. I mean, you you, you got to remember, this man was on the staff of Mike D'Antoni over there in Phoenix when they was winning. Yeah, he was over there. Alvin Gentry was a part of that. Alvin Gentry was also on the staff of the Golden State Warriors when they was winning. Yeah, he was part of that too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that man's there. Steve Kerr also said he doesn't know what he was doing, but, yeah, I'm listening to you. And Steve Kerr was the head coach probably five or six years after him. Uh, let's be real here. If I took Steve Kerr and I put him on the Pelican, do you think he would do way better than Alvin Gentry? I don't know. I don't think so. I think Steve Kerr is a good coach. Al Gentry is a great coach. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to discredit him totally. It's, it's things I like about him. It's a job. It's a good season that we just had as the Pelicans. You know, him being credited as being the head coach. But there's a lot of little things he could have. I see he could have done a lot better. And uh, you know, just just from the fact, like you know, like I was mentioning, Houston playing more like half court and playing good defense. There's no reason right. we shouldn't be able to do that and slow Golden State down with the top two def- defensive all uh, team players right now. I mean, uh, I just think about it. Uh, my problem with Gentry is adjustments. If if he can make these certain adjustments, he's not really he's not an adjustable coach. I, and I have I, seen Steve Hurd do that. different adjustments. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, you give a lot of these coaches four all stars <laughs> and two of the best players in NBA history. I think they could go on and do some phenomenal things. Not to downplay Steve Kerr, but Steve Kerr saying Al Jenkins don't know what the hell he's doing. I can't fully agree with him when it comes to running. Uh, rotation <laughs> and substituting. I might have to agree with Steve Kirk. When it comes to coaching defense, nah, I might have to agree with Steve Kirk. But when it comes to knowing how to put points up on the board, I don't think Steve Kirk knows what the hell he's talking about. But the topic was, will we take Dwayne Casey over Al Gentry? I think it's a very interesting topic. We're going to be coming up on a break in three minutes, just getting your heads up. Stephen A., all right. So, Dwayne Casey, coach of the year, man, gets fired by the Toronto Raptors. And we could have possibly had a, a look at him. I think Dwayne Casey is a perfect storm of a coach, meaning uh, he can get you some good defense 
and he can also get you some good offense. He's a balanced coach. But we're coming up on our break, so uh, you know we got to pay them bills, man. Uh, we're going to give y'all 15 more minutes on the other side, and we got two very interesting topics. Uh, one of them is probably going to pretty oh, much take up the whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back with y'all in a while, uh, my Pelican Sports family. See y'all in a minute. Pay these bills. latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings and potential moves, unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Yo, we back. This is DC from Big Q and the guys. But Big Q ain't on the day. So it's DC and the guys, Steven. (laughs) Or Justin, my bad. Here you go, Justin. And we're getting back to the topic at hand. Topic at hand. I think we did a good uh, good wrapping up of the Dwayne Casey, Alvin Gentry putting that to bed. So let's move on. Did Dale Demps do enough as a general manager last year? To where we should keep him around. I start thinking of a future, a Pelican's future, without Dale Demps in. A Pelican future without Dale Demps. I, I actually love what Dale Dimp's been doing. As, as far as the effort he's been putting out. Now, before we get into that last segment, I, I further explain myself. Don't explain too much. We've got to wrap it up because we all know how much you want to talk about DMC. I try to keep it quick, DC. <laughs> My thing is, I, I wanted the Marcus Cousins before anybody else could think about it. It's just a... a I you thought in my head. Dale Demps right now, though. <laughs> I, I'm, yo, get to that, sir. Please, right, if you I'll, allow all me. Right, all right. <laughs> I wanted DeMarcus Cousins before anybody even had the thought of it, including Demps. So just to think about him playing with Anthony, how dominant that could be that nobody could really compete with that in the middle. So for him to make those moves, 
and get a Demarcus Cousin, I thought was excellent. It show a lot of guts and it show he's able to get this job done to see if anything could work. And also, like, getting guys like Rondo for the contract he gave him out. So, I mean, uh, I'm all for keeping him for the, for the long term. I think he he's very – he got a, a wide mind and, and good eye for talent. Uh, just to see the possibility of how these guys will work with Anthony Davis. But I'll let you have it, D.C. Okay. Well explained, well explained. Well, I'm not going to be so kind. <laughs> I think he's good enough to keep his job as GM. But I ain't forgot about Omer Ashik, which he got himself out of a place with that because he was able to get us Nikolai Meritage. It's almost like. Beautiful money falling down from the sky from that bad trick yeah. contract with Omir Ashik, but all is not forgiven because we still had to suffer through that crap for like three years. So okay, you got that. Well, how 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 we know that? I'm, I'm sorry, wait, wait, but how we finish. didn't let how we didn't know the former coach didn't want guys like that. Let, if I don't you look care, at the moves he's making out of Gentry, I don't care who wanted what. He didn't perform with the former coach. He ain't performed with the new one. It's a bad deal. Fifty million dollars, crap. So, moving oh. on. Okay. To give a guy like Solomon Hill a $48 million contract, total head scratcher, and we're trying to get our way from up under that. We're suffering through that. Alexius Jinka, who has a $7 million contract, and a whole bunch of other bad moves prior to that, as well as some good ones. But right. I would have to say the good does all the way to bad with my man Dale Dents, because he was able to get Nikolai Meritage if he didn't do that. That yeah. maybe we wouldn't be in the playoffs. He got uh, Mecca Okafor, you know. Yeah. He, he was smart enough to have faith in Darius Miller, who gives us just enough. So he went he, after he, Greg Monroe. He was he trying to do Greg what he Monroe. does. He, he does some things here or there. So I'm going to say yes, Al Gentry has done enough to keep his job. So I was very impressed with the DeMarcus Cousins move, and he pulled uh, what would you call a uh, Big Lewowski again and got Nikolai Meriti around the same time the next year as he did with the Marcus Cousins. So shout out to Dell Demps. Keep doing I'm going to say since he – Quit giving he... bad contracts, please, my brother, so we could talk <laughs> highly of you. What you had to say before we go ahead and move on? Yeah, since, 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 he, um, since he signed the Marcus Cousins, I think all the, the players he's been sorting out, they're all uh, recruiting. He's been an A-plus guy prior to that. Yes, I can see a lot of F's he he deserves, so I see both sides. <laughs> you can't make F's all year at school, my brother, and get one A and just pass the Well, course. I mean, the guy is showing progress, and, then, you know, some okay. some okay. people take off slow. So, I mean, if he continue on from the, the pad he's been since that signing, I think he's in great shape. And uh, I love the fact that he's a Louisiana native, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, no, I didn't he, know that myself. He sat, under the, he sat under the Spurs. This man was a player over there, and I'm sure he's learned some things from such a wonderful organization. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad to have Dale Demps. I just hope he get wiser as he get older, because I don't want the Dale Demps of younger. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so it brings us to our main attraction. Dun 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 dun. dun. What everybody want to hear about? The Marcus <laughs> Cousins, I'm sure. He unfollowing people on Twitter because he grown, you know. <laughs> he following uh, Julius Randle and PG over there in the Lakers. Is he going to the Lakers? There's rumors of the Phoenix Suns trying to throw dump trucks of money at him. Um, yeah. It's all over the place. People saying we shouldn't get him. We should try and make a trade for Kawhi Leonard, which Kawhi Leonard don't talk, so we don't even know if he want to be traded. Uh <laughs> You got Paul George, who's a free agent. You got LeBron, who's a free agent. You got Clint Capella, who's a free agent. You got DeAndre Jordan, who's a free agent. So there's a lot of options out there, and that's just the big names. We ain't even talking about the smaller guys that can make a major impact. Nobody wasn't Thanks. talking about Nikolo Mar Nikolai Meritage, but look at the impact he made with us. You got Will Barton, who people love to bring up. All these topics. Then you got this guy, DeMarcus Cousins, who... Just give me a second and bear with me. I got to pull up the stats on him. Let me see what that stat tracker says. Whoa! He averaged 25, 13, and 5. 
Wow. Okay. He, he did manage, I think it was about three or four turnovers a game. Mm. Mm. And that was during the stretch when he had 60 or so turnovers a game for a while because we didn't have a point guard. People hate to, like, acknowledge that part. But nonetheless, should we keep mm. him, let him go? What it is? Well, you know, I like you, D.C., but there's another D.C. I can't stand right now. <laughs> and he go by the name of DeMarcus Cousins. Oh, man, come on. And I keep, and I keep, keep in mind, a second ago, I say I was the one all for bringing him in. You know, but the character of this guy, I never really paid attention to being he that he played in Sacramento. I really didn't follow his personality so close. But being that I, I since he signed, I, I didn't really feel like he wanted to come to us once we once he even heard he was traded. Wait he's a crying, minute. He's even, even so, he has a, a he's from Alabama. He's from maybe an hour and some change away from him. You but they let him tell it. We stole we stole Al- we stole Mardi Gras from Alabama. I oh. mean, come on now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Alabama don't mean nothing. This guy just want his money. You know what I mean? And I, I noticed think, uh, that Carnival before. May have started in, in France. <laughs> this guy is about his money. I try to tell DC this is where you rub me wrong from loving him and wanting him to letting him go. I mean, and this is another knock on LV Gentry who's begging him. To stay and basically saying we we need this guy is like you could tell well, I mean, he's the type really of beggar. To Alvin Gentry, Alvin Gentry, according to him, he says everyone in the organization, including teammates, all want the Marcus Cousins back. Yeah, I mean, I guess what man? I mean, Cousins I want says he wants to come back, regardless of his at, unfollowing debacle. Yeah, I mean, but you know that goes back to him getting what he want. Eh? And if he don't get what he want, he won't go to L.A. who could give him the closest thing to giving him what he want. Okay? okay. So, I mean, yeah, I think the players wouldn't mind having a DeMarcus Cousins there. And, but like Andy Davis said, if he wants to come back, you know what I mean? That's up to him to want to. Alvin Gentry is taking it a step a little bit further. It's like begging a woman who is clearly flirting with this guy in Los Angeles. <laughs> and, you know, I'm following you, but you still want baby, her so baby, bad. Baby, 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 please. Baby, please. Baby, please. Baby, please. <laughs> but. I think you take that you take that money, uh I mean, it'll be nice to try to get a Kawhi Leonard, another real star next to uh Anthony Davis. I mean but that's just wishful thinking. But there's a lot of quality guys out there that may not require so much money like cap who? wise. I mean like you say, I mean, Greg Monroe should be out there again. I mean they have other guys that you, like you found a Rondo for who could give you so much co- compared to what you're paying him. I mean, I'm not really going to just sit up here and just shoot for the stars, but the N- NBA, I mean, anything could happen. You could really get whoever you want sometimes, you know, if these organizations is willing to trade for them. But nevertheless, I mean, even if you don't get the main guy who's available at this moment, I think you could still have that salary cap out there waiting and make a you know a few moves here and there that don't really hurt the salary cap, cap to be able to pay uh Andy Davis the the contract he deserves okay. to be able to later on give him somebody to play with that's not uh all about the money. Well, I got you. Uh, well, my thoughts on the matter is if Demarcus Cousins wants to come back. And we both can come to terms on a decent contract somewhere along the lines of four years, 120, uh, two years, 75 million, three years, 90 million, something around there. I definitely think they should take him back. Um, following this team all year, looking at Demarcus Cousins, who averaged 25, 13, and 5, he did a hell of a lot out there. And a lot of it wasn't because he was a Celtics player. A lot of it was out of necessity. We were at times where we had no chemistry. We didn't have the same team we had now. Rondo was hurt. Nikolai Meritage wasn't here. 
Drew Holiday wasn't exactly the Drew Holiday we know him to be on the offensive end. Everybody was trying to figure out where they fit. And through all of that, AD and DeMarcus Cousins still carried the team to maybe about a 500 record. Now, when they, Rondo came back, when he caught stride, we went on an eight-game winning streak. We beat the two teams that's in the Western and the Eastern Conference Finals. Beat both of them. We beat Houston, and I believe we beat Boston more than once. What Kyrie Irving? So, the the to me, to clear that up before I move on and talk about some other options, DeMarcus Cousins playing here does not make the Pelicans a worse team, how some people like to think. DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, but do you see, in order to get him. I, I let you speak, my brother. Right, let me go right, ahead. Right. Let me go ahead. DeMarcus Cousins did not, does not make the Pelicans the worst team. DeMarcus Cousins can actually run the floor. DeMarcus Cousins does play defense. Like, these are the knocks people say. I don't know how fast he would be with his Achilles injury, but he's not saying that. We don't need him to be that fast. We did. We played with pace with him out there. Of course, we were a little faster without him, but we still were averaging 120 points a game. With the Marcus Cousins, you can't do that playing slow. But what we did, we had the ability to be able to slow the game down if we so chose, which I think is something that goes over, over and underlooked and that a lot of teams aren't able to do. So I think we should sign him back if we could. If not, we have a lot of other options. I don't think it's the end of the world for the Pelicans. We need to keep our core intact. You definitely need to keep AD. But if you don't get a guy like Marcus Cousins, or some other superstar within a year or two. What makes you think AD wants to sign a match with us? Well, I'm hoping we ain't got for 45 seconds, maybe a minute. So you got to hurry up and make it quick, my brother. Yeah, all right. DC, appreciate the toss back. But let me say this. I, I think AD will, will be growing into his own to know that he is – that superstar like a LeBron to his team or who really don't really have a supporting cast of his own. And for you to get a guy like DC for the contract you were expecting of, you would have to let him go out there and test the market to see that a LA wouldn't sign him. Maybe they will or a Phoenix wouldn't sign him for him to come to the realization. He's not going to get a better deal and a better offer than what the Pelicans are offering him. But, you know, I, I say if you won't go, let them go. I mean, we'll, we'll see who's available out there, and hopefully, you know, them make the uh, better decision and not get this guy a max contract with the injury he's coming back off of just to, for the sake of having him. Agreed, agreed. I think that's an excellent decision. And I don't think Dell Dempsey, as much as bad contract he handed out, crazy enough to do that. So, <laughs> moving forward. Marcus Cousins stays. If we give him a decent amount of money, Marcus Cousins wants too much money, he out of here. Point blank period. But y'all know we're going to keep having this conversation all off season. This is an excellent show. Glad to have you on, Justin A, man. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate you having me, DC. <laughs> excellent acquisition to the show, and uh, maybe we'll bring you back sometime in the future. So that's been DC from the Sports Coma representing Big Q, standing in as the host today, y'all. Shout out to Big Q, though. Uh, shout out to you too, Justin A. Shout out to all y'all fans. We'll see y'all later. Thank we'll you. We'll do this again. Peace. Peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks cubes and pyramids check out the poshlifestyle.com that's life spelled with a y p-o-s-h-l-y-f-e-s-t-y-l-e.com for all your health needs so get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle
Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated two and a half million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that wheat sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.